well. So today I wanted to do a video sharing with you my five tips for beginner food photographers. Now I do not consider myself a professional at all. I have learned how to take decent quality photos on my food through a lot of trial and error. So I'm really excited to share with you guys this video because maybe you don't have the most expensive camera out there or some special equipment to take really spectacular photos, but I can share with you guys some really easy tips on how to just make your photos look better when you're on a budget or when you just don't have a ton of experience. Now on a poll on Instagram last week, I asked you guys if you'd be interested to see a video like this and pretty much everyone said yes. So I'm super excited to share this with you guys. And if you don't follow me on social media, definitely check out the links down below. I have my links to my Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and like everything. So definitely follow me there for up to date content. Um, but yeah, I'm super excited to share with you guys these tips. So if you want to keep seeing how I take photos of my food, then just keep on watching. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is lighting. Now, of course, you could totally go out there and buy like lighting equipment if you're someone that shoots at night. But for me personally, I try to shoot all my videos and my photos during the day when the light when the sun is still out or when it's at least like kind of bright and cloudy um, I just find out my food, food turns out so much better this way there's something about natural light it's not too harsh on the on the food so it doesn't make it look um, I don't know how to explain it it doesn't give it that like flash look that you sometimes get and if you shoot when it's too dark outside it can also make your photos look very dull and like gray toned so try to avoid shooting when it's dark and try to avoid using like um, fluorescent lights or anything Thing, try to shoot in natural light. Now, for me, I'm really lucky because my house has a ton of windows. So what I do is I shoot right in front of the window and the sun or the light just comes directly in from that window. Um, but if you're someone that doesn't have a room with a lot of lighting in it, I would definitely suggest taking your photos outside. So my second tip for you guys is to use a backdrop. Now in my house, when I'm cooking, I actually um, have a marble countertop and it's fine to cook over and everything like that. But when I'm taking photos of my food because there's like fluorescent lights right above the countertop it hits the marble and it just creates this like reflective quality which again just make the photos look really cheap and poor quality so I actually just went to Home Depot one day and this is when I first started my food blog and I literally purchased this plank of wood um, I don't know how big this is but it's just under a meter on each side and all I did was I bought a stain. It was like a mid-tone stain. If you go to any like Lowe's, Rona or anything like that, they will have like a ton of like stain options for you. Um, but I kind of went with this mid-tone stain. It was, you know, a nice color and everything. I just took the plank of wood and I stained it. And this is how it looked before. So it looked like really shitty before it was like light colored and I don't know, I didn't like it. But yeah, I just stained it and it ended up turning out really well. And I just use this as a backdrop when I take my photos. It just looks a lot better and it's great to shoot instead of putting it on the floor or something like that, especially if you don't have any like super nice countertops in your house. So that was super inexpensive. I think everything with like the stain and the plank of wood, I think it all came to like 15 bucks, which is not a huge investment at all. And this has lasted me like years. So I definitely suggest investing in a backdrop if you don't have a table or a part of your house where you really like the backdrop to take photos on. Um, if you have like a wooden table in your house, that might work really well or like a marble countertop that you really like that isn't too reflective, then I would use that. And also pick a backdrop that kind of matches the aesthetic you're going for. So if you go on my food vlog, you'll see a lot of the photos I take use this backdrop on it. It's kind of like a wood rustic kind of vibe on my blog. Um, so to take a photo on like a marble background really wouldn't make sense for my blog, but a lot of people are into using like white marble and everything as a backdrop. And I think it looks really nice. And again, if you buy just a slab of it, it's really inexpensive and it will just last you. You can take photos in front of that. So my camera just overheated. So so I've kind of had to adjust everything. So hopefully the angle isn't too off from what it was before. Um, but my third tip for you guys is plating. So when I started off my food vlog, I was just using the plates that my house already had in it. So my family just has like these white plates that we got from Ikea and there's nothing wrong with that. But as I started to take my food photography a little bit more seriously and really wanted to create some more dimension um, in my photo and bring some more color in, I just decided that it was time to just buy plates specifically for my photos. So I just went to Winners and I literally bought these plates that you're seeing here. Um, this one I think was like four bucks. This was like $3 a lot winners or just like any kind of home goods store it just has a ton of sales usually and they're not expensive plates 
So I'll use like this rectangular one for more like appetizer photos and then I'll use this one right here if I'm doing like soups or stews. And on the wooden background that I use, this just looks so good on it. It just brings that like pop of color. Um, I just try to avoid using plates with a ton of different patterns on it because on top of like the wood, it just looks very distracting. So I just try to go for more simpler kind of colors and prints. But I think having these nice little pops of color are really great. Um, you can even find cheaper plates at like good will or value village like i've been getting really into thrifting and so the other day when i went there i just bought some plates and they're each like a dollar so it's extremely inexpensive and also if you don't want to buy like a ton of new forks or like all those like dinner sets and stuff going to like goodwill is a really great idea because you can just buy like individual like objects and then i just only use those really when i'm taking photos of my food to make it look nice um and again it just again brings some really great color into the photo when you're on a budget so my fourth tip um, is using textures in your photo. So this kind of goes along in the lines of where I was going with the plates. So uh, today I was taking a photo of a tofu scramble I made and when I put the plate down with the food on it, it everything just looked very like simple and flat and a little bit boring. So what I did is I just took a piece of fabric. I had like a dish towel that had like this really nice like rainbow kind of print on it. So I placed that just below the plate and then I layered obviously the food on top and it just ended up bringing this texture and this new dimension to my photo. And I highly suggest it, like just play around with different textures using dishcloths, tablecloths, um, even playing around with the kind of plates and stuff that you use, have fun with it. Um, again less is more so don't try to like overdo it with like a bunch of props and stuff but sometimes I'll put like plants in the background say if I'm making a recipe and the main ingredient in it was like basil I'll put like a basil plant in the background so it just ends up looking really nice and kind of completes the photo um, to tell a kind of story in a way so I really like you know staging my photos and then my last tip is how do I edit my photos I love it when people tell me that I edit my photos really nicely it just it means the world to me honestly and I don't use anything fancy like Lightroom or anything to edit my photos. Again, if you use that, that's awesome. I don't know how to use Lightroom. So I actually use this app called Bisco, which a lot of you guys have probably heard of, and it's free to download. There's another app called Foodie. Um, my sister uses that one. Play around with different apps and different um, kind of photo filters and stuff, but I just prefer using Visco. And I actually share an account with a friend of mine and she purchased the entire Visco preset library. So she has all the different filters and it's really not that expensive. Like if you did want to have the entire like Visco set, I think it was like 20 something dollars. And either you pay that annually or it's just a one-time cost. I'm really not sure how it works. But even before I bought, we bought the presets, like I just used what Visco provided and they have a ton of really great filters and you can kind of play around with how intense you want the filters to be and kind of just have fun with it and choose filters that you think make your photos look great. Again, I would try to avoid using ones that are really harsh. Like, obviously I wouldn't use like a black and white filter on your food because what's the point of all the color you add into your photo? Um, just try to keep it simple, I would say. And my favorite preset to actually use is this one called 06. So I put that on my food and then I just lower the intensity of the filter. I go ahead, I play with the contrast. I usually up the contrast a little bit. Um, and then I'll also play around the, with the exposure. It just depends on how bright or dark my photo is, but sometimes I'll just like up the brightness slightly in the exposure just to bring some light into the photo. Again, it really depends on the photo you just took. And then next I'll go to temperature and I'll just slightly increase the temperature just by a bit. I always like adding a little bit of warmth into my photos. I feel like when I take photos of my food, adding a warmer tone to it looks a lot better than making it cool toned. Again, it really just depends on the photo. I just really wanna emphasize that you don't have to spend a lot of money to take really great quality photos. Um, when I first started my food blog, sometimes I got super lazy and I didn't even use my camera to take photos, I used my iPhone. And that is completely fine, do not get me wrong, you don't need to spend a ton of money, you don't need to buy fancy lights, like, this is all just like things that I've just learned along the way that are really inexpensive and I haven't had to spend, spend a ton of money to take nice photos. If again, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below and be sure to follow me on social media to stay up to date with new content. And I'll see you guys next week in another video. Please subscribe and I'll talk to you then. Bye!